Now strap yourselves in and welcome to the stage your host, Stephen K. Amos. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 2019 Sydney Comedy Festival here at the Enmore Theatre in the heart of Newtown. Give it up! Now, folks, we have a packed superstar lineup for you this evening. We've got guests from around the world, international acts, and local acts. All we ask you to do, guys, is have some fun and have a laugh. Put all your thoughts and prejudices at the door and have a laugh tonight. And that is why I love coming to Australia. Because you guys, you're simple folk, but you know <laughs> how to laugh. Every time I come to this country, something weird happens, right? Five years ago, I flew over from London, where I live. I live in southwest London, a place called Wimbledon. Yeah, that's right, I got money. <laughs> and five years ago, the headlines around the world, financial crisis, the world is in turmoil, people are losing their jobs. I get here, your headlines, no fucking bananas. <laughs> The wind came, water came, bananas, they fucked away. $40 a kilo, fuck that, I'm buying apples. I could not believe what I was reading in the paper. I was like, who lives here, monkeys? What is this fixation with bananas? And I've been coming here for many years now, and I used to love coming here and taking the piss out of you lovely people about your constant revolving door of prime ministers. But I've just left the, left the UK, and we've got our Brexit situation, so I can't say shit no more. So instead, what I'm doing, I'm reflecting, I'm looking back at the things over the last 10, 12 years that I've been coming to Australia. And one of the first things I ever noticed, ladies and gentlemen, oh my goodness, I watched your television uh, for about one hour, and within that hour, I saw an advert that ran 27 times. This advert was louder than the TV programmes. This advert all those years ago, folks, went something like this. Doors, doors, get your doors now. Back doors, side doors, no windows. Get your doors, all your door needs, now. And as the voiceover is going doors, doors, the words doors, doors is being flashed intermittently on the screen as if to induce an epileptic door buying frenzy. Must have door. Where is door? <laughs> and I couldn't help thinking, is there anyone seriously sitting in their house in the Aussie outback, wind gusting through, <laughs> going, fuck me, that's a good idea. Let's <laughs> get two of those. <laughs> Front and back. So fast forward to this year, I've been very fortunate enough to be travelling around your country on tour, and I went to one of your interesting villages, um, a place called Tasmania. <laughs> I'm not even joking, my presence alone upped the black population by a thousand percent. <laughs> yeah, people had come from miles around, you could see it in their eyes. Have you heard the news? What's the news? There's a black guy in town. Bring the children, shine, wine. <laughs> and I don't know if you guys use hotels as often as I do, right? I was in, in a place uh, in the village of Tasmania called Devonport, one of the more salubrious villages. And I noticed there were no high-rise buildings, none whatsoever. So I walked around the town centre in all of a minute and I can only assume there are no high-rise buildings because it was a suicide prevention measure. <laughs> well, I've had enough! Oh, fuck. Still on the ground. So, yeah, I check into my hotel, and I don't know if you guys use hotels as often as I do, you don't get keys anymore. You get plastic cards, right? I put my card in the door, the door didn't open, didn't open. I was there for 10 minutes. 
So I had to ring the front desk. I can't go down. I ran the front desk. A guy comes over from concierge, thunder in his face, not happy. He walks up to me, looks me up and down, gets his own card out, puts it in the door, and then he opens the door outwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he does this to me. I was like, excuse me, what is all that about? He went, sir, it's health and safety. I said, what do you mean health and safety? He said, sir, if there's a fire in your room, you can get out of the door quickly. I said, mate, I guarantee you that I've reached the age I have in my life that I can negotiate a fucking door. <laughs> if there's a fire in my room, I wouldn't run to the door and just go, ah, what is this? There appears to be a force field. <laughs> and now I am burning to death. And more importantly, folks, if there's a fire in the hotel and people are running for their lives through the corridors and I open my door outwards, <laughs> I'm not having the situation. <laughs>